Oh, I like this one, and I like uh, Bank Time's answer. Brandon Shamo, any tips for captain, uh, captaining, <laughs> uh, being the captain of an eight ball uh, or an APA team? And Jim is is uh, or Bank Time Pool's answer is don't. Um, so here's what I've learned on being a captain for the for the last three years. Because when I when I first played APA, I I never wanted to be a captain. I didn't like the idea of being in charge of people because I just didn't like the idea that if people didn't show up. Uh, for whatever reason, um, then I would be upset, right? Because it's just like we're, you know, there there are people that that obviously play for fun, and I get that, and so that's why it's it's not supposed to be that serious. But there, to me, there's a fine line between playing for fun and then being on a team, right? Because if if you're being on a team, that means you're you're relying on one another to to be there uh, when you're needed, and that's regardless of whether or not you have a five player roster, a six player roster, seven or an eight, because you can have up to an eight members on a roster. So usually when some people can't show up, you pull in uh, somebody else uh, to re replace that person. So what I've been able to learn, especially since, you know, because of technology, right? We have cell phones now and Facebook, text messaging, instant messaging and all that other kind of stuff. Um, my team members are very well aware that um, I let them know who is going to play um, a week in advance, like pretty much like right when the uh, the schedule is out. Um, and based on who the opponents are, knowing who the opponents are, I determine what their best roster could be. Like if they're going to throw their absolute best roster, these are the players that it's going to be. And then based on that, I choose what my roster is going to be, which could be a mixture of things. Typically, it's going to be like one or two high players, um, one medium player and then two low players. And my roster um, that I have is designed to where people can be shuffled around. Like I'm the highest player on my team. So I'm usually always a staple uh, to play. But sometimes we've actually had opponents um, where in eight ball, they don't have a six or a seven. So that means the lowest or the highest player that I could potentially play is a five, um, which I've done from time to time. But I also have fives on my team. So when we come up against team teams that are like that, that's actually a night that I can have off and then uh, be able to rotate um, other players in. So these players know, my, my team members know a week in advance um, who's supposed to play or a few days um, in advance. And so um, that way, when, if they know they cannot play, right, then they would obviously hopefully let us know two or three days in advance that they can't play because then that immediately allows us to replace the player with somebody else. Now, every once in a while, sometimes there's always a last minute cancellation, right? Not, not everything can always go according to plan. Sometimes I've had players had to cancel at, at last minutes due to work, um, due to emergencies, you know, whatever, right? That, that's, that's all well and good. That, that happens from time to time. So you have to, you have to account for that. You have to be respectful of that. Um, but it, it's definitely uh, something different when, you know, you schedule people to play and they don't show up and they don't notify why we don't why they don't show up but i don't usually have that happen on any of um on any of my teams so if you're going to captain a team you obviously want to um, have a team of people that you, that you know are going to be reliable um and by reliable i do not mean by they're always going to show up when you want them to be reliable also includes if they're unable to show up they will let you know well in advance so that way you can substitute them with somebody else, right? Because not everybody's going to want to play every single solitary week. Um, if you've been to a typical APA night, you know the nights can uh, be rather long. <clears throat> sometimes I'm usually at the pool hall until like 11, sometimes midnight. And I think the longest I've been there is 1 a.m. In, in an APA match, right? So what I also try to do when it comes to rotating members is the order in which everybody's going to play because we do typically try to match skill level for skill level. And sometimes people are like, hey, you know, if, I, if, if it's possible, can I play first so that way I can leave? I mean, I do try to accommodate that from time to time, but I also make sure that those people know that if they're leaving early this week, they're staying late next week because I can't always allow the same people to leave early and always allow the same people to stay late because to me, I just think that's unfair, right? Because if they're not, if, if, if I have team members that are not willing to look at me as a teammate, like I look at them as a teammate, then that, to me, that almost creates a conflict because people will want to look at me and say, well, you're the captain, you're supposed to stay um, late and do all this and do that. And I'm like, 
I'll, I'll give you that, but like, don't you think I deserve a night off as well? Or is it just y'all that deserve a night off? So I want to make sure that even my team members look at me as a team member and not just as a leader, because I typically try to also train my team members to become leaders. We all, we started off with one team. Now we have two teams. We have one eight ball team and we have one, one nine ball team. And they're all consisted of people that have been on my teams when we originally started as eight ball. And I trained them to obviously keep score, uh, keep tabs on people. Um, you know, uh, I, I've had threes that have uh, people that start off as threes with me eventually become fives and sixes. And so those that become five and sixes eventually start leading. Um, I've had uh, some of my fours do captaining, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not all the weight is just on me, but it's it's delegated. It's spread out, like just like how a manager would do um, in a job. But it's always making sure that it's done with people that I think are reliable. And whenever an issue does come up with reliableness, it's addressed immediately, you know, and obviously try to address it in a friendly manner. It's not like you want to be aggressive uh, towards the person like, hey, what's the deal? Why aren't you able to, to show up on a regular basis like everybody else? You know, you want to try, you want to try to be understanding of people's scenarios and what they have to deal with and stuff and figure out how you can accommodate uh, one another, but always making sure that you're doing this nice rotation of things where like you have a nice rotation of people playing uh, throughout the throughout the session. You have a nice rotation of those that get to play early and leave versus those that get to play and stay late. So that way it's as even as balanced as possible. And everybody should be fair with that. And basically, if we find some, if you find that you have someone that's just not cool with that, then chances are you wouldn't want them to be on your team. Like it, it would be, it would be a waste of time, you know, because that to me, like that's the best way to have fun with all of this, where everybody is doing practically the same exact thing throughout the entire session and not one thing is being favored to one player over another. Because like I said, it's a team. And the moment you start focusing on one individual player because of whatever scenario that they happen to be in, it doesn't become a team anymore. It becomes about that one person. And I just don't think that's something that you're going to want to uh, try to try to handle, you know, you, and that's that and that's with being able trying to be as accommodating as possible. Right. But there's there's only so much like you have to accommodate one person and then forget that there are three other people on the team that you also have to try to accommodate. So one shouldn't have precedence over the other. And then there's yourself, even as the captain. Right. I, I don't agree with the argument that the captain should always be there late and the captain should do this and the captain should do that. I, I just don't agree with that. The captain is part of the team and should have the same privileges that he's that he or she is trying to grant their team members, because then that creates the cohesive team that you want to have to play, to have fun, make it to cities, make it to the world championships, et cetera, et cetera. Nice, long winded answer, but I hope that answers your question. <laughs>